Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Cinema Wave Podcast here at the Culture Wave Media Network. We are here once again to discuss the fifth episode this time of The Penguin. This episode is titled Homecoming. I am one of your hosts. My name is Darren Scalamoni. I am joined, as always, by Vinny Albano. Hello, hello. And we're now past the midseason mark, Vinny. Mm. We discussed yeah. last week's episode, which is um, a fantastic episode that really revolves around the making of... Sophia Falcone is the hangman and her experiences in Arkham. And again, like 85% of the episode is Sophia is well, the whole episode is so um, revolving around Sophia, but we only get like maybe 15% Oz in last week's episode. Mm -hmm. This one, we get a lot more Oz again. Uh, and we start to see the way that the tables are turning with him trying to work on things with the Maronis, but also the aftermath of Sophia now building this new legacy for herself Hmm. post gassing the whole entire Falcone family besides Johnny VT. Hmm. And again, man, this show, I think I texted you hmm. when I was watching it and I was like, this show just continues to get so it's so, so, so well written. Oh yeah. And there's yeah. so many things that just happen where you're like, I can't believe that just happened. And we've been talking about the, um, the comparisons to Sopranos, which it obviously has a lot of um, homage to that. But I also love how like we're starting to see, especially in this episode, more with Oz and um, Victor's relationship. It's kind of like Breaking Bad with like Walt and Jesse syndrome mm. a little yeah. bit. You know what I mean? I see that. Yeah, yeah. I just I loved so much of what we got in this episode. Give me your initial broad thoughts on uh, episode five, Homecoming. Yeah, they bring us back to the present day, you know, after spending so much time within the flashback of, of Sophia. And I loved how subversive this episode was. Like, taking it from, like, obviously the ending of last episode was crazy, but now it's like, where do we go? And they left us completely in an unpredictable state last episode, and even as this episode went about, unpredictability after unpredictability, like, I wasn't expecting Sophia to torture Johnny VD and then re-enlist him to then just shoot him. Yeah. Like, point blank at the table. Uh, it's a shock moment. Oh, There's yeah. There's a couple really good shock moments in this episode. That one was one that evoked a reaction of me just being like, like, yeah. <laughs> like yeah. out the gate, being like, Oh my god, what just happened? And the yeah. repercussions of what's to come with that. Yeah, and I love that. Even not as explicitly shocking, but from a storytelling perspective, shocking is at the end when Sophia makes that agreement with Salvatore Moroni. Mm -hmm. That was like, oh my god, like I don't know why I didn't think of that. That was so smart. Um, yeah, I just loved how subversive this episode was. And I also love how in this episode we see a side of Oz that we've had glimpses of, but in this in this episode, he is by far the most anxious and the most frustrated we've seen him. He's now at a point where he's been cornered and he's been put in a corner where he he does his best to get out of it. Like we mentioned, like that's almost when he does his best quote unquote work mm -hmm. as the penguin or as Oz, right? Where he's pinned in a corner and he has to on the spot come up with bullshit. Uh but now he he's on a good he's on a good track, but now it's all these like possibilities of being pinned in a corner that's making him even more anxious, specifically with his mom. And it is fascinating to watch it is so like i i love it it's such captivating television yeah well the other part of it too is he thinks in so many ways oz as a professional bullshitter thinks he's always a step ahead of people hmm. and so much of the counter acting sort of um reaction and the way people are are acting around him is like that he's idiotic and you kind of see it play out with what you're talking about with this eventual uh potential team up between salvatore maroni and sofia gigante now mm. as she's going by yeah. the gigante family um and you see it when 
I mean, obviously he has this whole plan. The episode starts where Oz decides, well, now this, and this is before he knows the Falcons are killed. He mm. decides to kidnap Taj uh, Maroney, um, who is uh, the influencer child. Um, I guess like a young adult that um, is the son of Sal and his wife, um, Nadia. And another great sequence where he's getting tattooed, right? And you see all the background of, of Oz and his gang kind of oh, coming in and scene. killing people. And all you hear is like the, like the muffled like pops of the yeah, gun. Yeah. And people are just getting their heads blown off and then they chase after him. And you see Vic like really get into it. He punches the dude in the face and, and Victor already says early on in the episode, he's like, I want to be a part of this now. Like, and you're starting to see the full transformation hmm. of Victor Aguilar as being this sort of right hand man to Oz. Hmm. Um, and you see it when uh, he apologizes to Oz about him having to blow up the car. And then he just, he goes back to the, um, the influence that he had, which we discover in episode one, when he's talking to uh, Alberto. Um, and there's just so much of the little stuff in this episode that makes, again, the writing so juicy. And yeah. it's like, all oh, the yeah. characters, they're developed so well. Every character, you feel something for them, mm. like regardless of what it may be. Um and yeah, I just think that we see, like you were talking about, so much of a side of Oz still thinking he can get get ahead of people. And at the same time, you start to see, like you said, this anxiety that's forming in him that we kind of speculated and, and predicted. I don't know if it was after episode three or four about like these people that he loves and he cares about now, they're going to start being targeted. Hmm. And you hmm. see it break down within um, his mother and um, – the uh the prostitute that he's hooking up with i forgot her name i'll look it up but mm. maybe you had yeah um another cool thing that you mentioned right because you, you brought up the little details one of my favorite moments of this episode was when the when oz brings out taj maroney i thought he was just in cold water mm -hmm. Uh, it turns out he's in gasoline. He lights him and his mother on fire, which was another shocking, unpredictable moment that I was like, holy shit. Because uh, it's such a brutal way to go out. A brutal visual, yeah. too. They do a really good job of holding on Nadia and Taj and seeing their bodies like crumble. And you're yeah. like, oh, dude, only on HBO do we get this. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. like crazy. Yeah, and like you mentioned, those why I'm bringing this up is those little details of this episode is that shot where the flame of the lighters in the foreground and we see Oz's uh, face in the background of that. And we see Oz almost take this sense of euphoria and ecstasy within the moment, right? So it's like, Although there are so many moments where we see an empathetic side of Oz and we're now beginning to understand this villain and this monster, but we can't forget he's a monster at the mm -hmm. end of the day. Like he's going to brutally murder these people uh, in a very unsavory manner to get what he wants. Um, so that little shot right there that they just hold on his face just long enough to be like, don't forget, this guy is still a villain. So I like that. I like that a lot. Well, we also get that in a larger sense with the juxtaposition of Sophia in last week's episode where you see her and even when Carmine, her father's having this conversation with her being like, you're the heart of this family, like mm. my sweet Sophia. Yeah. And they turn her into a monster and you see it, the full transformation at the end of the episode where again, it's like you you definitely feel empathy for her when she's going through all the shit that she's dealing with in oh, Arkham, yeah. especially when you have a realization that she just wants whoever killed her mother to be brought to justice, whoever that may be, um, but also recognizing that she is a daughter of a mob boss and what mm. that comes with. And then by the end of the episode, it's like she still has the empathy to save the young girl, her niece, I think it is. But then she kills the whole rest of the family. And it's like, that's another thing you have to realize. Like, she's still a monster. Like, yeah. like she became the hangman because of her situation in Arkham. And like you're talking about with Oz, that's like a full encapsulation of what this show is and what makes the show still so great. Um, oh, man. It's just – it's so – so great and mm. so well done it, it really is i can't i i like gushing over this show because it's like so reinvigorating and it feels like it feels like old hbo like when when we were in like prestige and, and we still have great mm. episodes of tv me and you have discussed too how much we love shogun but like 
seeing this not only on HBO, but, but being a comic book property that feel, and we talked about this in the very first episode we did for the show, right? The worry that, um, you had a little bit more maybe than me about it being a little too grounded and not as fantastical in terms of like, again, like understanding who the penguin is as a character. And we still have three episodes left to see kind of where things end up. But week after week, the character development and and crafting this world within Matt Reeves's mind and Lauren LaFranc, LaFranc, who does such a fantastic job as showrunner in this, just building this out, it feels – it's the first time it's felt like grand while still feeling um, in this wonderful, perfectly encapsulated box of this universe. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It feels yeah. like yeah. something Marvel would have done – years ago to, to lead us up to something. And this is doing it in a much more gritty and a dark way. And it's like the perfect sweet spot for like who I am as a fan of, of cinema. Like this is what I want to see. Oh yeah. Like every yeah. single week. This is great. Yeah. I a hundred percent agree with you. Now that you, you brought up Sophia and uh, a little bit before that, I don't know if you saw, but last night a headline came out because we've been predicting if, Sophia is going to die at the end of this. Oz going to die at the end of this. Sophia is returning in the Batman part two and is going to be playing a quote unquote major role. Interesting. I did yeah. not see that. Where did you see yeah. that? Was that a report? Yeah. I, I just looked it up on Google while we were, cause it popped in my head. I saw it on Instagram. Uh, IGN reported on it. Interesting. Uh, Dexterdo. Yeah. All like, pretty credible sources though. yeah i mean it's it's all over here by interesting i i so i didn't i didn't see that hmm. part of the thing that also makes sense to me though is and i don't know why but it's like when we were having this conversation i think it was last week's episode we're like at some point one of them is gonna have to die yeah right whether it's oz or it's sophia because one of them has to rule gotham crime um and you would think that oz is the one who ends up getting that by the end of the series. I mean, again, he's the titular star, the character wise of the show. Hmm. Um, but with the gigante twist, it adds another layer to it to me Oh yeah, where it's like, she's just going to be building herself up amongst the background of all of these things. So I am curious still. It's like, even if Oz winds up on top of Gotham crime, like what does that even look like hmm. at this point? You know, yeah. where, where does that leave Sophia as a character um, on the outskirts, especially if she's going to be playing a major role in the Batman part two. Um, and I'm just so curious and I can't wait to get more details on that movie because we've heard a lot of things. Like we know the one thing that I'm pretty sure Reeves has confirmed is it takes place during Christmas. A lot of this show is taking place, I think in the month of November hmm. where the, the Batman, the first film took place in, in Halloween time and in, in October. Yeah. So this show is taking place at the back end of October <clears throat> and in November, we're going to get a December, January sort of time setting for the Batman part two within the same year. Uh, and we've heard rumors of Mr. Freeze. We've heard rumors of the court of owls. Uh, we've heard rumors of scarecrow. So mm. I'm curious to see which villain they go with yeah. and yeah. the impact that's going to have, because it's very obvious that Oz will, even if it might be in a smaller capacity, maybe than the first film, Oz is still going to be in the second movie as well. And now Sophia playing a major role. It's like, so are we going to, we're probably going to have to wait until Batman part two, until we get the Sophia and Catwoman interaction. Yeah, I'd have to, yeah. I'd have to believe that's, that's what I was going off. And mm -hmm. That's what my initial thought was is too. Cause I'm like, at this point in the series, we talked about having Zoe Kravitz, Catwoman possibly interact, but if they don't interact now in Batman Part Two, they're definitely saving it for that. Uh, that dialogue though between them would be crazy, unbelievable. You know. Uh, also, kind of going back though to to the episode at the core of it, what do you think is gonna happen with? Because now Oz only has two buckets of mushrooms. They went through all that effort to get the mushrooms back from the Maronis, and all of them died off except for two buckets. What do you think? the significance is that going to lead now i'm curious because the other thing is like again oz has now had an interaction with the people that have worked directly with the bliss hmm. um and the mushrooms when sophia kind of brought him in on that operation um i am curious to see sort of if those characters come back into it i do think it was interesting that and i love the way that they kind of frame it 
Again, it's why the writing is so good for the show because it makes you feel like empathetic towards this awful crime boss. Mm. But it's like he is basically at his wit's end because Eve, played by Carmen Ajogo, that is the uh, the prostitute that he yeah. is in a romantic entanglement with. She basically is like, I'm going to, I'm going to, and you can, you can weigh it both ways. It's like, is she saying that I'm going to be holding you back because she's terrified and she doesn't want to be involved with Oz anymore? Hmm. Or does she really believe that? Does she think, you know, I really do have this care for you and this love for you, but like you're crumbling and you can't lie to me. And you've been now trying to finesse things around me a little bit. And that's not okay with me. Yeah. Um, so now he's there with his mother and he tries to be vulnerable laying in the bed with his mother. His mother tells him to get off of me. Yeah. Um, and he finds this, uh, this, um, trolley, uh, coin that him and his, and you also find out that he had a brother Hmm. in this. Um, and, uh, when Victor asks him what happened to his brother, he said, the city took him. Just like your parents. It's very interesting. I would love, and I think we will, because hmm. you see in the trailer a flashback. Hmm. I would love to see things with him and his brother to see how that shakes out. But in terms of your question, we do get that final reveal towards the, or the very end of the episode yeah. where he goes in the trolley tunnel with Vic and they find a place, a locale, to house the mushrooms to grow more of them. Hmm. Um, and we see in the preview for the following week's episode, he's meeting with other crime bosses saying, "This we got what we need. But the other problem with that is he's a professional bullshitter. So how much is he leaning on to yeah, people? Yeah, exactly. Based on what he has. Yeah. Um, I think he's going to finesse that until the end of the series. Probably. Mm. We okay. have three episodes left. And if it's not at least the end of the series, he'll do it maybe for next week. And we'll see what kind of plays out with that. Um, and maybe it gets split up. Maybe Oz decides to run the crime aspect, maybe not drug running, but the other yeah. aspects of crime through Gotham. And maybe Sophia goes the way of bliss. Or again, maybe Sophia winds up getting extradited by the end of the show. Because all three, we just said one of them has to die. But now knowing they're both, both most likely in Batman. I think the big payoff in terms of deaths that we can, and I, I'm predicting here, are going to be Sal and Victor. Hmm. Probably. I don't think, I think we yeah. had we had the, the near death of Sal Maroney this week. And Clancy Brown's a great actor. And he's someone of grave. I wish he would live. Because I think he's a great actor and he's oh, yeah. great as Sal. Mr. Krabs. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But you yeah. need – he's also great in Dexter if you've ever seen him in Dexter yeah. in, the, in the Dexter sequel series. Um, um, but you got to kill somebody off. And Victor is the character that as an audience member, regardless of him now kind of embodying himself as – Oz's right hand man. It's mm. still the character where you're like, well, he's just a he's just a kid that had nothing, and yeah. there was somebody looking out for him. Like Oz yeah. was his, for the lack of a better term, guardian angel, yeah. his guardian yeah. penguin. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, and it's it, it brings that question. I think we've most likely talked about it in the previous episodes. It's like he's gonna go. He's gonna. He, we have seen time and time again that he will go to any lengths to secure his place as the top of gotham as the the guy will that lead to a path possibly of having an ultimatum of having to kill victor and you know building up this empathetic side of oz and and empathizing with victor and we're seeing this throughout the entire series and then the last episode comes and a situation occurs where it's like you either have to choose your power or this kid's life and oz would a hundred percent. Yeah. Do you think what, cause you're saying he might have to kill this kid, but you're saying not in a literal sense. You're saying in a sense where like we saw in episode three with Sophia, right? Making a choice. Is that what you're referring to? Or do you think he might have to literally kill Victor himself? <sighs> well, in both senses of the, he might have to kill Victor himself. I think it'd be something akin to that where it's like, you think we're going to get a choice between him and Francis? Hmm. Uh, his mother? Oh, yes, yes, yes. I think so. Okay. I think so. Yeah. Wow. Or or we see both of them die at the end of the series. That's what I think we're yeah. going to get. That's what I think we're going to get. He becomes the penguin, like this villain, this just cold, cold-hearted mob boss. He has no, nothing, no one to care for now. Mm. Everything is just about the money and the power, you know. That's Interesting. A, yeah. It just, there's so, there's so many... Oh, I love this show, man. There's so it's so fun to speculate. There's yeah. so many balls that still need to drop. And we've had characters die 
like left and right in the in the coming weeks, but we got three episodes left. I don't know if they're going to go for a second season. Mm. Obviously, we've discussed previously that they've discussed an Arkham show, a Gotham PD show, which I'm game for both of them. Yeah. Give me any and all of your Batman stories, Matt oh, Reeves, because yeah. yeah. they're so good. Um, Francis, Francis, I want to talk about that relationship for a minute hmm. because Deirdre, o- I want to get her name right. Deirdre O'Connell, I believe. Yes, Deirdre O'Connell plays Francis Cobb, Oz's mother. She's so good in this in such a way that I think it's like she's the unsung MVP of the show because mm. not only that, but like the way I'm so curious whether they rehearsed together or what the conversations were like between her and Colin when doing this show because they have the same cadence when they speak. They have the same accent. Mm. And there's these heartbreaking moments uh like when victor comes and picks her up and she's talking about the baseball glove the dementia's kicking in yeah. and she's like you used to play baseball you remember that and vix thinks it's a really sweet moment for oz and Oz's like i never even played ball like it's uh-huh. like not even about him like yeah. the only yeah. thing he has to represent and impress his mother you would think is that he's gonna get to run the city of gotham because it's yeah. always been his dream and it's always been his aspiration and she's there for it So the death of her character, if slash when it happens, is going to be really impactful. And now I'm thinking to myself, you know, maybe you're right on the choice part. Maybe he winds up having to pick Francis and she kind of rides out with him. And maybe that is like something else that kind of goes into Batman part two where, you know, Sophia ends up alone again Hmm. with no Sal. And she uses that as something towards oz going forward with francis going into the implications that might have for like maybe maybe we secretly don't know that penguin might be the big bad in the second movie Mm, you know and it's like maybe sophia decides to make this move where she kills francis it's it's a domino effect and you have i mean you still have the two villains like you had in the first batman you had you had penguin and you had riddler where there was obviously the main bad kind of causing the chaos Maybe you have that with Penguin and then you're building towards the Court of Owls in the in the background. Yeah. As a more mysterious sort of thing. Hmm. That's a good way of putting it. Uh I didn't think about that actually. Yeah. But that's that is valid. That it's is valid. so fun to yeah. speculate in this world. Dude. No. Oh, I, I, I love agree. Matt Reeves. I love this guy. And I because I, I again I keep saying it too. Unbelievably massive credit to Lauren LeFranc for show running this this amazing show. Hmm. It's it feels we talked about we did our reviews for House of the Dragon. And it just felt like lackluster. Like there was, and part of that might have been the strikes. Part of that might have been we don't we don't know. Yeah. Um. This show was made at the same time though, and hmm. we get this product. Maybe they did reshoots, whatever they wound up doing. But this show is continuously week after week. It's like there hasn't been a bad episode. Yeah. Of the show and knock on wood, like it all comes to fruition in a nice package, but it's genuinely, if you're not watching the penguin, which at this point it also reached a high in viewership, active viewership. This week's episode got 1.8 million, which is the highest of the season. Hmm. I believe the show has now, the first episode has at least been watched by 14 million people. Hmm. Numbers continue to climb for the yeah. show. It's doing massive numbers for Warner brothers it's at least going to garner Emmy noms for at least Colin and Kristen, hmm. you would think. Oh, yeah. I think it's worthy of a Best Drama nomination. I think you can make a ton of um, of a case for both Deirdre O'Connell as well as Renzi Feliz, both being nominated for Francis and Victor, if and hmm. when the time comes. But for me... And we still have three episodes left. This show is like an A plus. Like I, I, there's not much for me to nitpick, and it feels just so great to be engrossed in a world again. Like it just feels, and it doesn't need to be the Marvel tapestry of like a universe and everything needs to connect. Yeah, it's just this perfect ball within Matt Reeves' world of of crime and underworld and and yeah. ghetto and uh, disgusting and and grim. Like it's just. But it's so entertaining and it's constantly surprising me, which is why I think the show is is so brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Another thing too, I don't really have too many other thoughts, but one thing that was interestingly set up in this episode was Squid. 
the street guy that Victor tells Francis, like, yo, like, watch out. And he notices Francis when they're walking into the apartment. Mm. But we don't see that any more of him after that. So I'm curious what now his role is going to play in the next three episodes, if if any. I mean, it's pretty significant that they, if making that eye contact, I think that's going to definitely be a point. So now we have another player, you mm-hmm. know, another, a wild card who, you know, this might just be a street criminal who sells drops on the corner, but that could mean, you know, if he finds out that that woman is Oz's mother and then kidnaps the mother and then works with uh, Salvatore and Sophia on like getting her to them, you know, like this could be a, a, a crazy wild card that was just very subtly dropped. You know, hundred percent. No, I totally agree. And it's, yeah. it's great that you brought that up because it's something that, might go unnoticed with all the other crazy shit that happens in this episode. Yeah. Uh, I think he's obviously going to have some sort of connection with Sal or mm. Sophia. He's going to have to be a liaison or a middleman. Yeah. Getting the information to them where they're staying. Uh, and I think that's going to have an impact on them in that trolley center. I mm. think we might see another washout. Like we might see yeah. something significant happen with the tunnels. Um, there's a lot, man. There's a lot to chew on with the show. There's mm-hmm. always so much, and I'm just so excited that and blessed that we have this show that we can watch every week and then we get to review. Um, but let us know in the comments what your guys' thoughts are on The Penguin thus far. We're five episodes in. We're obviously loving the show. We can't stop gushing about it and how much we love it. Um, <clears throat> we love theories, so definitely let us know in the comments what your theories are. We kind of had a bunch of theories in this episode, which is always fun to sort of speculate on what's to come next. Um so there's a lot to still play out with the penguin and a lot to still play out in Matt Reeves's Batman universe, but we know we're getting the Batman part two and in, in 2026. So more is to come with Colin Farrell. And now obviously Kristen Milioti as, as Sophia Gigante. Yeah. So um, definitely let us know in the comments, what you guys thought, give this video a like, if you can and subscribe to us. We are the Culture Wave Media Network. We cover all things film and television. You could also check out all our stuff on social media. All that stuff is going to be below me in the video as well as in the description. We're also currently covering the Montclair Film Festival in Montclair, New Jersey. We've gotten to see a bunch of really great movies that are going to be wide releases in the next couple of months. Uh, Vinny had a chance to see Anora as well as Memoir of a Snail. I got to see The Order. I got to see small things like these as well as Bird. And we have other stuff coming for you guys, including uh, The Piano Lesson, which is going to be a Netflix release. All these great, exciting things that we're doing here at the Culture Wave Media Network. So join us on the wave and follow along. Just signing off, I am Darian Scalamoni. And I am Vinny Albano. And we'll see you guys next time. This is The Culture.